So good morning. My name is Dr. Annette and I love to help people find the energy and have fun and live a healthier life because that's what it's all about, right? On their oh. own. Okay. So enzymes, enzymes are proteins that help catalyze, help things happen inside the body. They actually help things happen. They're a catalyst for a chemical reaction. So um, if you consider an enzyme, think about um, when you put baking soda on something, how baking soda bubbles, or if you use, um, even if you put dish soap into water and it starts to bubble, those are enzymatic reactions. Those are things happening. And um, when you consider a protein that helps cells work, helps them do their jobs and being a catalyst for a chemical reaction, a catalyst, the definition of a catalyst is actually um, a substance that enables a chemical reaction to happen. And those things do not just happen inside of the human body, but a catalyst is an agent that helps to instigate or speed up a reaction. But it's a great way for me to keep track of what I wanted to talk about. So a catalyst that provokes a reaction and increases the speed or process of that. So enzymes are super important to every cell in your body. And without enzymes, things just don't happen properly as far as digestion or breaking things down or absorbing things or all of those things. That's all part of the enzymatic process. Um, so where do enzymes come from? Enzymes come from the foods that we eat so everything that you eat is supposed to have enzymes in it to help break it down. It's the way nature was created. It's the way God created the universe. It's the way all of it was supposed to work from day one. If you think about an apple that falls from a tree or a peach that falls from a tree, when it hits the ground, it starts an enzymatic reaction that actually creates a bruise. And if you don't get a hold of that apple or peach and eat it before those enzymes start to take over, then you end up seeing a bruise on the apple. And that bruise on the apple is actually enzymes doing their job. So think about a tree, what its job is. A tree's job is to grow, to make fruit, and to make more baby trees, right? So how do you think the seeds get into the ground to make more baby seeds? So the apple falls to the ground, the enzymes kick in because of the thud, and then the apple starts to break down. The enzymes that are inside of the apple naturally start to break down, and eventually that apple will break down to nothing, and the seeds will be left on top of the ground, but the ground will be soft because the enzymatic things that happened will make the ground soft and wet and moist. So the enzymes broke down the apple and then what's left of the apple feeds the seed and then the seed begins to grow another tree. And life goes on and on and on just like that. Um, so when an apple falls from a tree and gets bruised, that bruise begins the enzymatic process. And the enzymes then break down the apple fertilizing and not necessarily fertilizing, but feeding the seed and making a good home for that seed so that that seed can grow and become a tree. Isn't that great? So when you have enzymes in your body, the enzymes in your body also have jobs, right? So the job of the enzyme in your body, say um, papain, for example, papain comes from papayas and your body also makes it. But um, if you eat a protein and your body is breaking down that protein, papain is an enzyme that helps break it down all the way. And um, for those of you that have trouble breaking down proteins, a digestive enzyme that has papain in it typically is very helpful for breaking down proteins and um, helps your body not be as gassy because of those proteins that are being fermented and broken down. We'll get deeper into those types of things over the course of this week as we go through poop talk for the rest of this week, talking about the liver and the intestines and the pancreas and the stomach and all of those things and how digestive enzymes 
work together to make all of those things happen. So I'm sorry if you're making comments, I can't see them at the moment, but please go ahead and make your comments and I'll be happy to answer them whenever this video is over. Unfortunately, the way this works, I can't see the comments that are popping up at the moment. I do know that someone did comment though because I saw a notification pop up on my screen, but I can't read it from the screen that I'm in. So just feel free to make comments and let me know if you have specific questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you um, as soon as I get done here. So um, enzymes are something that helps your body do what it's supposed to do. They help every cell in your body do the functions that they're supposed to do to keep you healthy and um, happy and all of those things. So when you talk about breaking down proteins in the body, proteins are necessary for all of the functions in the body. Proteins are what make things happen. Proteins actually make enzymes. So just because you can get enzymes from your food, which um, I could go on a huge rant about that. I won't right now, but the foods that we eat that come in packages from the store, those foods don't have enzymes in them. The enzymes have been killed so that the foods last longer. So think about it. If you're eating a food that came in a box and you're waiting for that box food to spoil, it's not going to spoil, is it? So they killed the enzymes and then they put preservatives in there so that the food will last longer. Hey, Romy, how are you? I haven't seen you forever. So think about it that way. If they put food in a package in the store and the enzymes are still active, you know, they've had to smash things up. They've had to do things to make those foods edible, to make them palatable, to make them good for people to eat. Well, guess what? If you break down those foods to put them in a package at the store, the enzymes have to be turned off in order for the food not to spoil before it gets to your table. So what happens when you eat foods that don't have enzymes in them is it's up to your body to make those enzymes. And most of us, because we eat a lot of processed foods, have depleted our body's ability to make enzymes. So the foods just kind of sit there and ferment and turn icky. And that's why you get flatulence, and burping and things like that because not only have you eaten something that no longer has the enzymes in it that are needed to break it down, but your body is depleted of the fuel that it needs to make those enzymes. So guess what? It can't break them down either. So the foods just kind of hang out there and they don't get handled the way they should. And guess what? That causes you to not be able to absorb the nutrients in them and utilize them, break them down properly. And guess what? If you don't have enzymes, you can't poop. Your poop doesn't work. Your poop is um, stinky, really, really stinky. And it um, is either total like diarrhea or constipation. You don't really have the ability to do what you need to do to get those foods through your body. And I mean, the whole reason to eat food is to, to feed the cells in your body, right? So, I mean, Eating is not to celebrate. I mean, we use it a lot to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and graduations and parties. Hey, Julie. Um, food. That's what we use for everything, right? We reward ourselves with food. We celebrate with food. We uh, keep ourselves busy with food when we're bored. We use food when we're sad. We use food when we're happy. And... If our bodies don't have what it need needs inside of it to break down those foods, then guess what? All we're gonna do is get the calories that we can get out to use for energy because your body's gonna do that because it's basically designed to survive, right? So your body's gonna take what it can, it's gonna store what it can, and it's gonna get rid of the rest. So, I mean, you should technically go to the bathroom about 12 to 18 hours after you eat something. So if you eat something and like one way to test how fast your food goes through your body is to eat something like corn that doesn't get digested all the way so that you can see when it comes out the other end. I know that's disgusting, but if you're really concerned about how fast things are moving through your body, that's one way to test it. When you see the corn come out the other end, you know how long it took your body to process that meal. 
So 12 to 18 hours, depending on what you ate. If you eat a more vegetarian style diet, then you're gonna process things probably a little quicker than if you have a heavy protein diet because proteins take a little longer. They stay in the stomach until that hydrochloric acid has a chance to break them down. I hope this was helpful. I hope you all will come back tomorrow. We're gonna talk about the stomach and what happens in the stomach and how hydrochloric acid and other things that go on in the stomach help you be healthier and happier and get things moving in the right direction. So thanks for watching Poop Talk. If you enjoyed this, or if you think somebody can be benefited by this, please share it with them. Please ask them to like my page, Be Better, Dr. Annette Stevenson, or join my keto group, Keto Lifestyle with Ask Dr. Annette. We have lots of fun keto things going on in there, and you can also get your hands on my favorite keto drink by joining that group and asking me where I get those from. I'm happy to help you in any way I can. So make a comment, send a message, whatever it takes, Get a hold of me and I will help you be healthier and have the energy you need to do the things you love to do with the people you love to do it with. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day.